Now we touched on uh, the Old Testament is about you a little bit this evening and we're going to uh, try to focus on the books of, the book of the Kings uh, later. Uh, there are one or two people that will mention from the book of Judges. But I also wanted to answer or at least discuss some questions that have been asked. And um, I should look more at the camera but I keep watching the time because I only have, you know, this 10 minutes to speak. Uh, we somehow gotten into a discussion, not um, directly online where I was speaking, about things that are genetic and things that are not genetic. And it has to do with uh, when we were discussing evolution. And there were several interesting questions. Uh, one of them was why identical twins who have exactly the same genetic makeup one of them gets a, a genetic illness the other one doesn't or there's something different between the two uh, identical twins that you would normally not think should be there well the answer lies not in the genes but in epi epigenetics uh, it happens that our understanding of these matters changes fairly rapidly with, with new developments in, in research. And, uh, you know, when the uh, Genome was project first started, people really expected to come upon, oh, 100,000 different uh, genes, combinations and all and ended up finding out that human being has about only 20,000 or so. And uh, so we, we began to make a lot of progress and really the studies where we make the most progress are about trying to cure diseases. And some of the genetic diseases are among the worst. Things like cystic fibrosis, retinoblastoma, and all these things. Why, for example, would two identical twins be born one of them would develop retinoblastoma, that's still in infancy, and the other would not. Or why would one develop, say, cystic fibrosis and the other not? And the answer generally will lie in um, epigenetics. And so uh, the reason I wanted to answer the question a little bit and discuss it was because there are so many debates and arguments about what is genetic and what isn't genetic and mostly it's based on a misunderstanding of how this whole thing works the subtle mutations that take place that they're minuscule but end up making an enormous difference because sometimes these silent mutations in DNA end up causing a gene to produce a protein which is different from what should be being produced. In the case of cystic fibrosis, for example, there's no gene that says, here's cystic fibrosis and I'm going to give it to you. What happens is there's a mutation in, a, in the uh, CFTR gene and when th there's a, a no kind of a pump that regulates the uh, transmembrane flow of fluids in and out of cells and it regulates the amount of sodium going in and out of the cells. Now if for some reason that pump isn't working because of a mutation, uh, I'm calling it a pump, it's a transmembrane channel, but anyway it isn't working properly and the sodium balance is quite off then cystic fibrosis is going to result not because a gene popped up and said uh, I'm going to give you cystic fibrosis but because the sodium balance is not there and it's because of that sets off a chain of events and cystic fibrosis is the result so we can't say there's a gene for this or a gene for that always what we have to say is there's a mutation in a gene, something is not produced 
some chemical is not produced, uh, there's an excess of some chemical, and this therefore creates an end result. So it's not a gene for it, but the mutation in the gene or the fact that the epigenetic switch on a given gene doesn't turn it on or turns it off when it's supposed to be turned on. And this is what happens uh, in, in many of these cases. So when people are, are talking about, well, everything from evolution to um, why there are genetic illnesses or genetic diseases and how we should approach healing them or curing them. Um, there, there's a, a genetic problem called um, extreme androgen inhibitory factor and where uh, a child is uh, a fetus is a male but is born with female sexual organs or a feminized body or both genitalia and the doctor has to decide which way to uh, to change the, the fetus in completely male or completely female. Of course the people are not permitted, doctors are not permitted to do that anymore in North America until the, the child is old enough to tell them him or herself what gender they are. But it could be an XY chromosome, therefore a male child could be born with female genitalia or a combination of both or any kind of of um, disorientation. Now this is generally thought to cause by an epigenetic switch that turns on or off a gene. And uh, so this is why even when you have identical twins one might end up with cystic fibrosis, the other not. And a genetic illness might manifest itself differently, maybe the same defective gene but it depends on whether it came from the father or the mother it can be a completely different disease, even though it's the same gene, but if it was uh, donated by the mother or donated by the father, it can result in a completely different genetic illness. So it's very complicated. And the reason I wanted to answer the question or say something about it is because people tend to try to oversimplify some of these things. And uh, sometimes also a child is born with a certain disease and people you know, wanting to soothe themselves or, or assuage themselves will say, oh, well, it's God's will for this reason or that reason, and likely it's just the result of a, a mutation or an epigenetic switch that operated in the wrong way. And uh, so we, we don't want to uh, oversimplify this, this question about genetics, and yet ideology is going to always play into how people deal with genetic, the findings of genetic research. And people are going to focus on one finding or another and they're going to make that a part of the ideology they're trying to promote. Years ago, uh, I, I think I mentioned once before, we had a, a, a local Pentecostalist preacher who brought his down syndrome son to the monastery and wanted us to have an exorcism service and questioning him we found out that he'd been to every Christian group asking for exorcisms because he was convinced that the boy was possessed by demons and in fact the boy was down syndrome and um, we tried to convince him of that and no no it couldn't be you know, not my child well he was this is what he was ultimately saying but it's a genetic um, problem and perhaps even an epigenetic problem that a gene that should have been turned on wasn't, a gene that should have been on was turned off by this uh, epigenetic switch that, that attaches is attached to all genes. So we uh, don't want to oversimplify it, we don't want to say everything is God's will, uh, we want to accept people as they are, that's why Christ said about the man who was born blind, remember, who sinned that this man was born blind? His parents or him? And Christ said, neither one of them sinned. He was born blind. Neither his parents nor him sinned. There's something else going on here. And uh, that's precisely what happens in these genetic situations too. Why there's often such a difference 